grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, who is Jesus? That is the question that we've been asking during this Advent season. We've been using Matthew 1 and the genealogy there to kind of guide us. Who is Jesus? I think that's the most important question that we could ever ask. Who is Jesus? Well, some say Jesus is a therapist, right? He helps us cope with our problems. He heals our past. He tells us how valuable we are and, and, and not to be so hard on ourselves. Some people think Jesus is a hipster. He drinks gourmet coffee at Starbucks and loves spiritual conversations. He listens to cool music, drives a hybrid, and uh, goes to film festivals. Some people say Jesus is a coach, that uh, he helps us run faster and jump higher than other non-Christians and determines the outcome of Super Bowls. Some say Jesus is a hippie. He teaches everyone to give peace a chance and imagines a world without religion and helps us to remember that all you need is love. Some people say Jesus is a, a spiritual guru. He hates religion, hates churches, pastors, priests, and doctrine. And uh, he'd rather have people out in nature trying to find the God within. Some people think he's a revolutionary, right? He teaches us to rebel against the status quo and to stick it to the man and to blame things on the system. Some people say Jesus is a good example, that uh, he shows us how to help people and how to change the planet. And then there's the real Jesus, the biblical Jesus, the Jesus of Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1 announces that Jesus is the son of David. We took a look at that. The son of Solomon, we've looked at that. And today, we see that Jesus is the son of Mary. Verse 17 of our text reads, Thus there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Christ. Um, I believe Pastor Vogel read that a couple weeks ago. Here, in, in this little synopsis, what we see is Matthew summarizing biblical history in three sets of 14, or six sevens. Right now, if you're a, a Hebrew reader, a story can't end with six sevens. It's not a complete story, right? There must be another scene somewhere. You need a seven seventh, right? Well, this genealogy, uh, this story that Matthew shows us here in Matthew 1, it lacks an ending. And you know what? That's Matthew's whole point. Who is Jesus? Jesus ushers in the final act of God's plan of salvation. Jesus brings our story to completion. How so? Well, his two names that are connected to Mary complete everything that's lacking in our lives. Jesus is our seventh seven. And so let's see how that plays out. Verse 18 in Matthew chapter 1 reads, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. See, God chose Mary to be the mother of the Savior. There, there really was nothing special about Mary. She was a young girl. She wasn't wise in the ways of the world. She was a poor girl. She wasn't from a, a wealthy or a powerful or influential family. She came from a tiny town, a town not revered by the Jewish people. Let's just say that Mary had a very poor resume when it came to being mother of the Savior. So Mary conceives Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And you remember the story, Joseph, at first he's hesitant to, take, uh, to believe what has happened to Mary, and who can blame him, really? Um, and then God sends an angel to him to speak to him in a dream. And so Joseph is convinced, and his anxiety is gone, and he believes the unbelievable. 
And so Joseph chooses to trust God and to love Mary. And so the two of them live together and they share a home. Now I'm sure that that certainly would raise some eyebrows in their hometown of Nazareth, right? The busybody standing on the street corner would assume that Mary and Joseph conceived the child during uh, their engagement of, instead of waiting to be married. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. I'm sure they heard a lot of that. Nazareth was a, a small town, only about 2,000 people, so gossip like that would travel pretty quickly. Matthew continues, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus. Jesus is the English form of the Hebrew name Joshua. It means Yahweh saves or the Lord saves. So the child's name is Joshua or Jesus because this son is the Lord. And that name also describes not only who he is, the Lord, but also what his job was going to be to save his people from their sins. And not just his people, but all people. And isn't that what we need so, so badly? God knows we need that to be saved from our sins, right? We're so incomplete without that forgiveness, without that saving. You know, if all our economic problems were just vanished here today, our lives still wouldn't be perfect. If all our political problems vanished today, our lives still wouldn't be perfect. If all our psychological problems vanished today, or all our family problems, or our health problems were all solved, if COVID disappeared today, our lives would still be empty and lack completion. Who are we? We're people who need to be saved from our sins. And that's because contrary to what most of us think, most of the time, we're not the master of our lives. We can't save ourselves. Every political, social, and psychological problem is a result of our fallen condition. And that's why Jesus didn't come to be an economist or a sociologist or some family therapist, right? His name is Jesus because he will save his people, from their sins. Now, I don't know about you, but I experience joy and peace when I recognize that I can't bring my life to a successful conclusion. I just can't. I've tried. I'm sure I'll try again in the future. God knows I've tried. But my biggest problem is me, right? And so I need a Savior to rescue me from my sins. If we come to Jesus for any other reason, um, maybe because we think he's going to make us popular or successful, we're going to be disappointed because Jesus has more important problems to solve than our popularity or our failures. Those are just symptoms, right? Jesus laid down his life to save us um, from our sin, those sins that alienate us from God and from each other and are threatening to destroy us. And so Jesus, son of Mary, is our Savior. He isn't another prophet. He, he isn't some rabbi. He's not another miracle worker. Jesus is the one that these people have been waiting for to complete God's story of salvation, to deliver them from exile, to establish God's reign and rule, to heal the sick, to to give sight to the blind and freedom for the prisoners and proclaim good news to the poor and to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is that seven, seven. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. That's what Matthew writes, quoting Isaiah 7, 14, when he says, The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us. God with us. That's what Matthew, really, that gospel is all about. It appears right here in the beginning 
chapter 1 of Matthew's gospel. And then in the middle of the gospel, we hear these words, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. And then in the very last chapter, the very last verse, Jesus says, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And so Jesus, son of Mary, is not only a person, but he's also Emmanuel, God with us, up close and personal. And so we can rightly call Mary the mother of God and the God-bearer. Mary was the instrument that God used to be with us, to be with us in the most intimate way and really for the most intimate reason. And that's what our epistle reading today from Galatians 4 talked about. I'd like to read that to you, verses 4 and 5 from Galatians 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those who are under law so that we might receive the adoption as sons. See, the son of Mary became part of that holy family so that we might become part of his heavenly family. You see, through Mary, God took on our skin. Through Mary, God became one of his own creatures, putting himself in position to keep his law. Through Mary, God was able to suffer and to die on a cross to buy us back from sin and death. And then three days later, Jesus rose with that same body that he received from Mary, whole and intact, but glorified. And through Mary, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel is also God in us and God behind us and God going before us. Jesus is God, up close and personal, entering our muck and mire, our chaos and our our deep confusion. Jesus, God with us, completes our story. He fulfilled the commandments for us. He reversed the curse. Jesus comes to crush the serpent's head, to be our great high priest, to be Isaiah's suffering servant, to be Jeremiah's righteous branch, to be Daniel's son of man, to be Amos's roaring lion, to be Haggai's desire of all the nations, and Zechariah's king riding on a donkey, and Malachi's son of righteousness with healing in his wings. And you know what? You and I, we are a lot like Mary. There's nothing special about us, right? We're young, especially in the ways of God. We're poor in many ways, you know, spiritually, definitely, not from a wealthy, important, or influential family in God's eyes. We're not from a noteworthy town. Sorry, Cleveland. Um, We have poor resumes, too, when it comes to being the children of God. And so we often think, God wouldn't choose somebody like me to be part of his plan of salvation. But that's where we're wrong, right? Like Mary, God did choose you. Like Mary, you are a God-bearer. No, you don't carry God in your womb, but you carry God in your heart. Listen to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. See, God lives in you. Mary's carrying of God led to Emmanuel, God with us. And you know what? So does your carrying of God. As God lives in you, your feet bring God to wherever you go. Your hands Bring God's touch to whomever you comfort. And your lips bring God's word to whomever you speak. Yes, Jesus is the son of Mary. And because we are his brothers and sisters through faith, we too are sons and daughters of Mary and of God. The son of Mary completes your life, your story, and uses you to carry him, Emmanuel, to others. Those are his Christmas gifts to you. Merry Christmas. Amen.